It was a crisp day in London when I set out with Anna and Mateus to do some fabric shopping. We started out on Berwick Street, which had three shops and two others nearby. Our first stop was Nissan Fabrics. Walking into the store, everything was super organized and color coordinated, which I particularly appreciated. In the main room were some really gorgeous brocades and other expensive fabrics that I don't really need or use regularly. In the next room, just past the main room, were the more everyday use fabrics. There were plaids, various solid colored cottons, and a variety of sportswear. We headed downstairs to find another huge room filled with gorgeous fabrics. Everything from faux fur and leather to colorful wools and suiting and shirting fabrics. The adjacent room had dyed hides, an assortment of printed burnout velvets, nice. and corduroys and other sportswear type fabrics. And finally, the clearance cut shelves. Would I be able to find something I like? I don't know. This looks promising. You'll have to wait and find out. Misan Fabrics was a totally chill shopping experience. There were a couple of employees at the back of the store near the register in this very in-depth conversation. And when we walked in, they didn't really even acknowledge us, which was totally fine by me because I wanted to just kind of wander around, look at different fabrics and take some video to share with you. Most of the prices range from about 25 pounds, which was about $31, all the way up to two or 300 pounds a meter. And you know, that's not what I was looking for. So I was looking for some fabrics that were kind of within the normal price range of what I could buy here. And I was really excited to find this gorgeous jacquard on the clearance rack. Now, the way the clearance rack works is that you have to buy whatever's on the bolt. So, and it's priced per bolt. So this was 54 pounds, which would be about $67 for a meter, uh, 1.8 meters. Now to put that into context, a meter is a yard and three inches and it's 60 or it's 59 inches wide. So I thought, you know, this is something special. This is a silk viscose and polyester blend. I just thought it was gorgeous. I thought it would make a beautiful party dress or really full party skirt. And I decided to go for it. And this fabric is just so beautiful and colorful. The wrong side is actually just as, as gorgeous, but I like this side better because it's got more purple in it. So that was the first fabric that I got. Um, there was a woman downstairs who did explain the clearance rack to me and she was actually very helpful. She's the one who ended up um, cutting my other fabric, which is this gorgeous corduroy. This is a cotton and viscose blend. If you don't know, viscose is rayon. It's just the European word for it. And this is a lovely eggplant color. I just fell in love with this. I've been looking for purple corduroy for several years now. I'm going to make this into a skirt. I do not have a particular pattern in mind, but I've been wanting a corduroy skirt for a while. And down here in Texas, it is very hard to find corduroy. I've not been able to find anything until I went to London. And this was 25 pounds a meter, so that came to $31, which I thought was reasonable. Uh, we do have some kind of fancy fabric stores here in Houston, and you know, $31 for a yard or a little over a yard of fabric wouldn't be a bad price. So that's why I got it. I actually bought one meter, and they tend to measure like a little bit generous. So while this should have been a yard and three inches, it was actually a yard and nine inches. So I feel like I got a little six inches extra, which, you know, also a good thing. Buying it by the meter, you kind of feel like you're getting a little more because it's a little bit more than a yard. And it's also, you know, always that super wide width, which gives me a little bit more flexibility in what I want to work with. A short walk down the street brought us to Barovic Fabrics. This store was not going to disappoint. Walking in, we were greeted by incredibly gorgeous fabrics. These were some metallics that were just calling my name. There were chiffons and beaded sequins fabrics, foils, 
it was just amazing. And added bonus, it was easy to find everything because all of the fabrics were all lined up, easy to see, and more importantly, touch. The fabrics were just gorgeous, and they even had some beautiful printed Italian denim. Moving into the adjacent room of the store, I was greeted by this pool of delicious red velvet. It was just so exquisite. There were incredible laces of all possible colors and more formal type fabrics. Everything was just there for the touching, and it was kind of overwhelming. There were also knits and sportswear. Before I went to London, I emailed all the shops that I planned to visit and asked them for permission to video their shops, kind of explain that I was gonna be making this video about fabric shopping in London and let them know that I had a sewing channel on YouTube. The only store I heard back from was Barovic Fabrics. And Simon sent me a very nice email saying, yes, of course you can film. We'd be happy to have you. We will see you at the end of May. And when I got there, not only was the store like just absolutely gorgeous and made me wish I had some formal event that I needed to make a dress for, but Simon was there. He was super friendly and cheerful. His um, employee, Colin, was also there who was very, very nice and just chatty. And it was, it was a very fun experience. They were not high pressure or anything. It was just like, do you have any questions? What can I help you with? And that sort of thing. I purchased this beautiful pink faux suede. My plan is to make this into a jacket um, so I can wear it kind of probably fall, winter here in Texas. It's not super heavyweight. It's more of a medium weight faux suede. It is 100% polyester and Simon told me it was washable. So I don't think I'm going to wash the jacket, but I might wash the fabric before I use it. I haven't decided yet. It might just be made up and then dry clean only. The other fabric that I got is this super fun pink spotted vinyl. It's raincoat material. Now I know I've already bought raincoat fabric and still have to make a raincoat from my New York trip, but this is not for me. This is for Honey. She needs a new raincoat. Um, you know, we call her Princess Sugar Q because she does not like getting rained on. So she has to wear a raincoat when I take her for a walk. And Anna's actually the one who found this and suggested that Honey needs a new raincoat and I should do that and then make a pattern off of her old raincoat. So that will be a project to happen with this in the future. This was also 25 pounds a meter. I got 0.9 meters um, because I, I really only needed about a yard. It is very wide. It is the 58 inches wide. And so this came to 27, around 27 and change for this fabric. And then the faux suede was $31. And I basically got, you know, the two meter cut and that came out to about two and a third yards. So I'm really happy with these purchases. If you are in London and you can only go to one shop, I would say go to Borovic Fabrics because it's just the most fun experience. And they have some gorgeous fabrics, as you have seen in the video. So if you have a formal event and you're planning on sewing and you want some gorgeous brocades or laces or something like that, that would definitely be um, my choice just because it was, it was more interactive. It was more fun. A little further down the street was Fan New Trimmings, which had by far the most colorful front window full of beaded trims, appliques, buckles, and every other kind of notion you could possibly want. Walking in, there were displays of crystals and tons of feathers, regular and ostrich, and then beaded appliques for I don't even know what. It was just an explosion of color and texture, and there were so many things to look at. Moving through the hall to get to the back room, there were tubes of pom-poms and frog closures and tassels and buttons of every single shape and size and color. The back room was full of embroidery threads and all the threads you could possibly need, more embroidered appliques and zippers galore. Every color, every length, every 
style you could possibly want. It was just amazing. They also had hat forms and trims that snap tape and pom pom trims, and then more zippers, of course. Moving through the aisles, there were more tubes of tassels and fuzzy pom poms, fur trim, metallic trim, brocades, belting everything you could possibly need. And then there were rows and rows of ribbon in all sizes, materials, and widths. Back in the first room, I found buckles and a variety of closures. There were more metallic trims, chain, and of course, more feathers. Fan Trimmings was the shop that most reminded me of the stores in New York City. And if you've watched my New York Fabric Haul video, you would recognize the similarities of the front window displays and the contents of the store. Now, it was a little overwhelming because this store was so jam-packed full of stuff. I mean, when you walk in the front door, you're like greeted by like a giant display of feathers. They had all kinds of hat making um, tools and forms and everything you could possibly want for any kind of trim sewing, buttons, clasps, buckles, appliques. I mean, they had some of the most gorgeous frog closures that I have ever seen. And it kind of want, made me want to make like some kind of a chinoiserie kind of outfit. So I would have a reason to buy them because, you know, right now I don't have any plans for that. But maybe in the future, if I can go back to London, we'll see. The store is just incredible. It, there's so much to look at. I would have really liked to have a little bit more time, but we did have two more stores to go to and Anna and Mateus were being such good sports. And by that time we were get, all getting a little bit hungry. And so I kept it to a minimum. The only thing that I bought was this black velvet trim. It's kind of a ribbon trim. And I got four meters of this for nine pounds 60. So it was a good price that came to about $11, a little over almost $12. And it actually is almost five yards. It's just shy of five yards. So my plan for this is to use it on my faux suede that I got and to kind of outline the notch collar and also maybe the pockets. We'll see how it goes once I kind of get into the design since I don't have a pattern in mind yet. But the other inspiration for this project were some buttons that I found at Covent Garden a few days earlier. These are glass vintage buttons. I thought they would look particularly great on this pink and kind of make it really pop and use the black velvet ribbon as a trim. And I have four of these big buttons and then two of the smaller buttons. These were 18 pounds and I don't really know much about them but other than their vintage and their glass because that's all the lady told me at the little stand I was at. But I'm excited about making kind of a, a full one piece garment all from things I bought in London. That's something that will probably happen in the fall once it cools off here a little bit. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Our next stop was a short walk away on the street parallel to Berwick. We came up to McCullough and Wallace, a haberdashery store that has been around for quite some time. The main part of the store was bright and cheery and seemed well organized at first glance. The fabric was on bolts on shelves, there were trims and more fabric on large rolls stacked into the shelves. I found some swatches and started looking for some of the fabrics I had found online, but I needed assistance. Thankfully, one of the employees helped me and I was able to find exactly the fabrics I was looking for. We headed downstairs to see what else this store had for us to look at. And there were purse making supplies, more thread displays, trims and ribbon, and of course, zippers. McCullough and Wallace is on a street that's parallel to Berwick Street, and it was about a three minute walk from Fan Trimming. So also very close, centrally located in the Soho district of London. So 
The fabrics I got are not too exciting in and of themselves right now. I got this really beautiful wool gauze. If you could feel this, you would think that it, it was a very, very fine wool. A lot of times wool fabrics can be a little bit scratchy. This one is really beautiful and fine. It's almost kind of sheer. It's so finely woven. And this is one of the fabrics that I am giving to Jen to dye. She does a lot of natural fiber fabric dyeing and comes up with like some of the most incredible designs and applications. It's really, really beautiful. And so I had told her before I went like, hey, check out the website, see if there's anything you like and let me know and I'll get it for you when I go to London. So she told me she wanted some wool gauze. This was a little pricey. It is 100% wool and it was 35 pounds a meter. I got two meters of that. And then the other one I bought is this really beautiful silk and viscose corduroy. So it also does not look like a whole lot. It is also, it's kind of sheer between the whales of the corduroy, but it is, it's just a really beautiful fabric. It has a really nice soft hand. So completely unlike the purple corduroy I bought. And this was another uh, yardage that Jen said she wanted. This was 30 pounds a meter. I got two and a half meters of this because there's a slight flaw in it. And um, I did get a little bit of a discount. So that kind of, um, you know, made it a little bit better. John Lewis is a department store on Oxford Street established back in 1864. It was not on my list of places to go, but it was nearby. And I'm really glad Matei suggested that we stop by. The fabrics were very well displayed and added bonus, there were tags with all the prices and fiber content. I walked around and looked at everything. They had a great selection of apparel fabrics and there were plenty of things that caught my eye. Of course, there were also all the threads and notions that you could need, including trims, zippers, buttons and other basic type items obviously not the same variety as some of the other shops but great for you know basics they also had dress forms in a variety of shapes and sizes which i thought was pretty cool and of course the sewing machine display in all their vibrant colors i really feel like we're missing out in the states what I found and purchased at John Lewis was particularly unexpected. And I was super excited just wandering around to find William and Mor William Morris prints. Um, these fabrics have not been in production in a long time. I think that John Lewis has the rights to print them now. If you don't know, William Morris was an arts and crafts designer. He had his own company for interior designs and furnishings and all that good stuff. These are obviously reproductions, but I have loved William Morris designs forever. This is called Blue Marigold. I bought two meters of this. And then I also bought two meters of my very favorite William Morris fabric ever. It's called Strawberry Thief. And I have loved this fabric since I first studied it back in college, back when I was like 19 years old. And I, I just love it. It makes me so happy. It has little birds and strawberries and I love the name of it. And I was really, really excited to, to get this. And so the good thing about these fabrics is they were not expensive. They were 16 pounds a meter, which comes out to about almost just under $20. And they are about 45 inches wide. They're beautiful cottons. 100% cotton. And I just absolutely, I, I've been wanting these fabrics forever. So the fact that I actually could find them and, you know, purchase yardage made me very, very happy. And it was very unexpected because I did not know that William Morris textiles were even still available. And so being able to buy some just totally made my trip. I know these are not my traditional patterns or colors, but I've been in love with these fabrics for so long that I just had to get them. I'm thinking about doing something a little crazy and putting them together in the same outfit, not necessarily the same garment, but maybe a top and a skirt or something like that. We shall see how it turns out. But I'm just still blown away by the fact that I could find these. So next, 
I bought some really beautiful knit fabrics. Now, before I left on my trip and I made the two hour knit dress, I went shopping for knit fabrics, which were surprisingly difficult to find. I went to a more unique fabric store here in Houston where um, it's more New York style. It's like packed full. There's all kinds of stuff. And their knits were just exorbitant. Like the one that I fell in love with was $49 a yard and I would have needed two yards to make my two hour dress. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's just like crazy. And all of the knits there that were really beautiful prints and nice and colorful and what I like to wear were you know, between 49 and like, I actually found some that were like $78 a year. And that was just crazy. But I had been shopping for knits prior to going to London. So when I found these at John Lewis, I was super excited because I'd been wanting to sew with more knit fabric and kind of get better at that because it's not one of my strong points. I do have a lot of knit fabric patterns, especially for like dresses that these types of fabrics would be perfect for. So this is a, I have it written down. What is this? This is a polyester um, and elastine. So it's, it's stretchy. It's, it's one of, it's a two way stretch. It is 58 inches wide. I got two meters of it. This one was 14 pounds a meter. So that came out to about 1736 in dollars, which is a great price for knit, especially compared to some of the knits I looked at at the fancy fabric store here. So I bought this really pretty tropical um, looking one. I thought this would be gorgeous for summer. And it is, um, it's a lot of fabric because it's two yards and then it's 60 inches wide, but most of the knit patterns call for 60 inch wide fabric. So that will work perfectly. And then I also found this gorgeous, really graphic floral in all the colors that I like. And I just think this will work perfect too. And so this was the same price, $14. It's a polyester elastine. I mean, 14 pounds, polyester elastine. So I got two more meters of this. And, um, you know, the lady who cut these fabrics was not the same as the, the lady who cut the other fabrics. So the William Morris are exactly, you know, the two meters that they're supposed to be. But I did get a little extra fabric with the knit because the lady who was cutting was just kind of like, doo -doo -doo, let's just cut some fabric. So I got two meters. This one is two and a half yards. So it should be two yards and six inches if it was cut perfectly. So I got two and a half yards of this one. So super excited about that. And then this one was a little bit closer because this was two yards and a third. So um, you know, I did still get a few extra inches on this one. So I'm very excited. The other thing that I found at John Lewis that I was not particularly looking for, but was very happy to find was a Tilly and the Buttons pattern. Now I've been following Tilly and the Buttons. I, I think some of her patterns are a little too youthful for me, but I did really like this one and I was glad that they had it. Now, unfortunately they did not have a whole lot of Tilly and the Buttons videos. There was a little basket on top of the pattern cabinet which was full of simplicity patterns. So they had a ton of simplicity patterns at John Lewis, but not so many of the local, um, you know, British patterns, but I did get this one. I, I like the tie on the back. There are some other variations with a different kind of like a shrug sleeve, which I really like in a knit top. So, you know, if I have any leftover fabric, maybe it will turn into the shirt version of this, but, it was just really fun and it was totally unexpected. So it was, it was really a nice way to end my fabric shopping spree in London. And thankfully my friend Mateus knew that they had a fabric department in John Lewis and suggested that we go there. So thank you Mateus for that. And if you've enjoyed this video, you totally want to check out the New York fabric haul video because that is super fun too. And I know you're going to love it. I'll see you over there.